Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at another tech lot I picked up. Diving right in, I picked up this iPhone and parts lot for 50 Australian dollars. Amongst the listing photos was something that intrigued my interest. It looked like a custom iPhone. While I've built a dozen or more custom phones, seeing one pop up for sale is really rare. Even though it probably doesn't work, factoring in how many devices I also got in this lot, that phone really cost next to nothing. Once I got everything out of the box, I could see I struck gold. This is a custom 24 karat gold plated iPhone 5. Definitely an older phone, but something so unique and cool shouldn't be broken and in pieces. So I think we need to get it looking luxurious once again. I'm also really not liking the look of that gold display. It doesn't match the gold on the phone and makes the whole device look cheap. After unpacking everything, we can see what else was included. Unfortunately, no other custom or unique phones, just an assortment of older iPhone and iPod models, ranging from the iPhone 3G to 5S and iPod Touch 2 to 5. Along with that, a few new and used parts were included and a whole lot of strange phone cases, which I disposed of. Coming back to the main star of the show, this gold-plated iPhone does not look to have been well cared for. Despite that, the custom conversion looks unfinished and unprofessional. So let's see what we can do about that. Firstly, we need to actually see what the device does when it's plugged in. So connecting up a lightning cable, I was actually able to get it to boot up into an operating system after much trial and error. None of the buttons work, and it also kept regularly coming up with connect to iTunes, but eventually I got it to boot into iOS 7.0.4. So it seems to be alive at the heart, but it's definitely going to need a new display and have its button issues fixed. Let's see if there's anything else wrong with this phone. I'll start by disconnecting that old destroyed LCD and taking a closer look at it, you can see just how poorly it's put together. It's missing screws, things are loose, and the frame of the display is broken and warped in various places. I don't even know how someone could cause such damage. Inside, there's a bent piece of metal, and there are several clips and the eject mechanism for the SIM card reader that are missing. Now this is a mystery I'd like to solve, and I didn't have to look too far. Its original housing was included as part of the lot. It's got those missing pieces still attached to it, as well as the speaker and microphone mesh grills that were obviously not carried across to the new housing. Back inside, I've noticed the battery is punctured and the cable has been incorrectly routed. Removing it shows us that this battery is the original battery to the phone, so I will replace it later on. Next, I'm going to remove the motherboard, although I've run into an issue as there's no SIM card eject mechanism. Instead, I'll use a spudger to just forcefully push the SIM tray out of the phone. From here, I'll be able to disconnect all of the flex cables connecting to the motherboard and unfasten all of the screws. There are two types of screws used throughout the iPhone 5, which include a Phillips head bit and the standoff bit. After those have been removed, the motherboard can be lifted up and over to one side where I can disconnect an antenna cable before entirely removing the motherboard. Down at the lower portion of the phone, I'll remove the charging port assembly. This will allow us to install those previously mentioned missing mesh grills. I'll remove them from the old housing and install them on the gold housing as they should have been done the first time. I'll also install these metal brackets which are responsible for holding on the front display panel as well as the SIM card eject mechanism. What I believe has happened is the person that attempted this conversion forgot to install these parts and only noticed after installing the motherboard. At that point, they didn't bother to fix it and just continue without them. With the added fact that the buttons don't work, I don't think this project was ever fully finished. With the missing parts installed, I'm going to replace the power button next. This can be a bit of a daunting task on the iPhone 5 as it can be difficult to get the replacement power button to function correctly although I feel like I've gotten the hang of it having done it a few times now. I'll also attach the mesh grill for the microphone, which was also missing, just like the lower mesh grills for the device. I harvested this replacement power button cable from a donor iCloud locked phone. 
One tip if you ever have to replace one of these yourself is the power button's metal spring faces up. If it's facing down, you won't be able to click the button. It's always important to make sure that the buttons are clicking and working correctly before you fully reassemble the phone, just in case something didn't work out. I was surprised to see only one missing screw throughout the entire device, with only another being installed in the wrong spot. But thanks to that previously mentioned donor phone, I was able to get any of the necessary screws I needed from it. It's time to reinstall the motherboard so I can seat it into position and reconnect all of its cables. I'll also take the time to straighten out this bent piece of metal before reinstalling all of the screws. Proceeding, it's now time to install our replacement battery. This one comes pre-applied with the adhesive, which we need as there was no adhesive applied to the old battery. I'll install a new display panel, which is black in color, and I think that's going to best match the device thanks to its antenna lines and pieces of glass on the back. I will connect up the new battery. Its cable was a little bit long, but I managed to secure it into place. After cleaning off the insides with a microfiber cloth, it's time to seal up this iPhone 5 by closing up the display panel and attaching it to the gold frame. From here, I'll need to reinstall the two pentalobe screws into the bottom of our iPhone 5. Testing the phone, I found the power and home button still didn't work just like before. Oddly, if I plug the phone in and leave it connected on boot, it will always go into recovery mode. If I plug it in but disconnect it as soon as the logo appears, it will boot into the OS. Once it reaches the lock screen, you can see it instantly enters sleep. This makes me think the phone believes both of these buttons are always being pressed. Even shorting the home button contacts, the phone doesn't respond. To ensure it wasn't my handiwork, I swapped in another motherboard and all the buttons work fine. So unfortunately something is wrong with the old board, so I'll have to continue with the one that works. With our custom iPhone reassembled, I wanted to take a look at a couple of other phones in the lot, including this 5S which is breaking apart at the seams thanks to an expanded battery. We'll get it open in the same way as the iPhone 5 by removing those two pentalobe screws from the bottom. You'll see the display already lifting up on its own, no suction cup required. I can slide my pick around the edges to separate the display, which is coming apart between its plastic frame and the glass. After disconnecting the Touch ID flex cable, I can remove the bracket covering up the battery connections and try and pry up that battery itself. This third party battery is looking a bit sketchy with a sticker on top of that battery. I've seen original used batteries being sold as new. They rebrand them by putting a sticker on top of the battery, similar to what's seen here. I want to get it out and get a closer look at it and see if that's the case with this battery. Thanks to the battery adhesive being installed incorrectly, it was very difficult to remove, but after much prying, I got it out and was able to remove both of the stickers on the battery. Thankfully, this wasn't a case of a used battery being sold as new, but it's definitely faulty and needs to be replaced. But before we can do that, I'll need to remove all of the old adhesive still left behind. Placing in a new battery, we can finally test out this phone. Before, it wouldn't turn on thanks to the battery being incredibly dead, but this time around we get to a lock screen and see a passcode. This is one of the only devices with Find My iPhone on, but it looks to have been used by the previous owner, so hopefully they can unlock it. For now, I haven't glued in the battery, but at least I know the phone works and doesn't look like it's about to explode. So this is it. The $50 phone and parts tech lot. While I only purchased this lot for the custom gold iPhone, I did briefly test all of the other devices. In the end, we're left with an iPhone 5 that I had to replace the charging port on as it was faulty, but it's now working, a locked iPhone 5S, the gold iPhone 5, two iPhone 4S, an iPhone 3G with an expanded battery, and a 3GS with water damage that has no backlight. 
In terms of iPods, we have a 64 gig fourth gen that's destroyed but still turns on, a 32 gig fourth gen that needs to be reset, a second gen with a cracked screen and non-functioning power button, an iCloud locked iPod 5, and finally, an iPod Nano with a crazy scrambled screen. I'm not sure if this is an LCD fault, a logic board issue, or maybe just a loose cable somewhere, but that's something for me to look into later on. As for the gold iPhone 5, I've removed the iOS 7 board and replaced it with one on iOS 10, as the old board didn't respond to button presses. The housing isn't in the best condition, however the plastic protector on the back has saved a lot of extra scratches. There is still damage to the housing with the chips in the gold plating on the right hand side. At the bottom it says it was customised by Indulge in Gold. I looked that up and found the website. Despite it being insecure and half broken, it appears to be run by someone in Queensland, Australia. All I can say is I hope they didn't build this one because it wasn't well assembled. Although I have a feeling that it was just the previous owner messing around. Despite its flaws, it'll still be an excellent addition to my collection of custom phones. This includes gold-plated phones, and phones in different colour combinations you can't buy. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button, and consider checking out the Tech Lot playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.